I have created a file in GIMP that if you look in the top left hand corner you can see it's called colors.xcf. In the brackets here you can see it has RGB color four layers. Now the RGB stands for red, green and blue and the four layers is an indication that this particular file has four layers as you can see here. If you look at this particular layer, you can see the eye is in this position, meaning that this layer is in view. And this is the area. Now you will notice all of this area is actually white. Now the reason this is white is that we have red, green and blue fully switched on to their maximum. And we'll discuss what I mean by that in a moment. What I'm going to do, however, I'm going to come to this layer here and I'm going to switch on the eye and what you can see appearing now are three circles where the first circle is red, the second one is green and the third one is blue. Within each circle you can see I've placed a number and I've placed the number in all three cases as 255. Now if you imagine you have a torch and this torch is able to shine a beam of red as shown here. Now when the torch is fully on, shining as bright as it can, that shining as bright as you can is represented by this number 255. This one could be a green torch shining at its brightest, 255 being the biggest number for that, and likewise for the blue. You can see we can think of this as a torch shining at its brightest. What I'm now going to do is to switch on the other layer here and if you look at the red you can see it's a little bit darker than this red here. If you look at the green you can see this green is a little bit darker than this one and this blue is a little bit darker than this one. And what I like to think of again is a torch and this particular torch here that's shining the red isn't shining as brightly as this one. And we can say that this green is not shining as brightly as this green and this blue is not shining as brightly as this blue here. Now within these three, you can see in the middle, I've wrote the number 200. And that's the amount of shininess, brightness, whatever you want to call it, intensity, for the colour red, the green and the blue. I'm now going to switch on the other layer, which you can see here, and you can see I have produced different colours again. This is red. It's a darker red than the other two we've been looking at. This is a darker green than these two, and this one is a darker blue than these two. If you look in the middle of these three, you can see there is the number 100. So this one is red shining at 100, this one is red shining at 200 and this one is red shining at 255. So you can see that the bigger the number, the more of the colour you get. So this is 255, so the more of the colour red you get. This one here is 100, so you get red but you don't get as much as it. It's not shining with the highest intensity. Let's have a look at the blue. When it's 100, you can see it's darker than when the number is 200 and it's darker than when the number was 255. Now for all of these cases, the first three you can see I've chosen 255, these three you can see I've chosen 200 and these three you can see I've chosen to be 100. Now there is a 254, there's a 253, there's a 100, there's a 101, there's a 99 and so on. In other words, we can shine the red at various levels. The levels range from 0 through to 255. Now when it's 0, it means there's no red there at all. So green, for example, can go from 255 to 0, likewise the blue. So what we have, we have red that can be within the range 0 to 255. Now that's 256 levels. The green goes from 0 to 255. Again, that's 256 levels of green we can have. Likewise for the blue, we can have from 0 to 255. 
and because we start at zero that's obviously 256 different levels now we'll come back to the importance of knowing there's 256 levels a little bit later in the video now if we look here what we're really looking at is what i like to term two swabs we can see there's a black and the white now the black is the foreground color that we have and the white is the background color so if i was to start a drawing with a pencil for example because this is black i would be drawing in black what i'm going to do now however i'm going to click on the black and this appears here and i'm going to change to this view here and i want to look in particular at this region and you can see we have an r a g and a b and they stand for red green and blue components if you look in this region here you can see that it is showing the current color what i'm going to do i'm going to come to here where we have the red component and i'm going to type 255 and click ok and if you have a look here now you can see that that is red let's go back again so in other words when this component was 255 we can see that this current color here is red let's change this to 200 have a look at the color red now here you can see it's gone darker if I move this to one side here we should be able to see that that color is the same as this color here now I'm going to go back to this again I'm going to double click on it again and I'm going to change this now to 100 and when I do if you look at this color you should see that it's the same as this color here so in other words I've just shown how we can get the red the darker red and the darker red still by changing the red components now clearly I can do the same for the other components so I'm going to change this one here to zero and I'm going to go to the green and I'm going to change that to 255 and then say OK. And if you come over here, you can see that this is green and you can see it's the same color as this one here. In other words, we've got the green fully on with full intensity. If I come back to here now and what I'll do, I'll change the green now to 100 and click OK and you can see we have this color which is the same as this so in other words you can see how by going to this particular dialog box here we can change the red the green and the blue components and get different shades now what I'm going to do now I'm going to switch the red to 255 and I'm going to switch the green to 255 and click OK and you can see you get yellow in other words if we go back and have a look you can see here I've got red as 255 green as 255 and blue as zero now what this means is we're shining red at its maximum we're shining green at its maximum if you think of it being a bit like a torch and we've no blue there at all so we're not shining any blue but we have got the red and the green at the maximum. Now I'm going to change the blue to 255 and click OK. And if you look here, you get white. Now the reason you get white is you're shining red at its maximum, green at its, at its maximum, and blue at its maximum, and you get white. Now remember, this is in paint. This is light that you're looking at. Imagine if you were to mix red, green and blue with paint, you certainly wouldn't get white, but you do with light. I'm going to go back now to here and I'm going to change the red component to zero, meaning no red. I'm going to change the green to zero, i.e. no green shining. And I'm going to change the blue to zero and click OK and you get black. In other words, what we're saying here, there's no red shining, there's no green shining, and there's no blue. There's no intensity of red, there's no intensity of green, and there's no intensity of blue. 
Now, the only things we have with red, green and blue is the ability to shine red, green and blue at different intensities. And what we've just done, we've made them all zero. Now, if they're all zero, we ain't got any light. And if we ain't got any light, what you have, you have black. Go out at night, there's no sun, it's black. There's no red, there's no green, there's no blue. But when the red was 255, the green was 255, and the blue was 255, we got white. Make them zero, and you get black. I'm just going to do one more example. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to make red 255. I'm going to make green 100. And click OK, and we get this orange-looking colour here. So what we have, we have the ability to have red at any number between 0 and 255. Likewise the green, likewise the blue. So we can have 256 levels of red, 256 levels of green, and 256 levels of blue. Now here you can see I've brought a calculator up. I'm going to type into the calculator 256. So that means that can represent the 256 levels of red that are possible. So I can have 1, 0, 2, 10, 11 for red, up to 255. The fact that I start at 0 and go up to 255 means there's 256 levels. But if I had red at 0, I could have green at 0 and blue at 1. I could have red at 0, green at 0, and blue as 2. So there's lots of different colours I can make up by having different shininesses of these different colours, different intensities of these colours. Now the way in which you work out how many possible colours you can have, you can see I've typed in 256 for red. Now I'm going to multiply that by 256 by the number of greens that are possible. Then I'm going to multiply by 256 again for the number of blues that are possible and hit return. And if you look here, you can see you've got 16,777,216. Now you'll often hear it said that you have 16 million colours. Well, you can see it's slightly more than 16 million colours in our number system. So in other words, it is possible by mixing red, green and blue with their various numbers that they can take up between 0 and 255, you can have 16 million different colours. Now, you need to be careful here. 16 million colours in the software, how good you monitor? Well, that's another story. Um, can your eye detect these 16 million colours? Well, we're going to have a look at how that pans out in the next video. But what I wanted to do here was to show you what in fact we have when we're talking about colours when we're dealing with light. We can see everything is made up of red, green and blue. If you want different colours, you have to put these numbers in different combinations. A certain amount of red, a certain amount of green and a certain amount of blue. And you can make 16 million colours. The GIMP file that I'm working on here is an example of an RGB mode file. This is a file that can store 16 million different colours. There are other types of mode files in GIMP. You can have what's called a grayscale mode, and you can also have what's called an indexed mode file. Now we're going to look at these in a later video. But what I'm going to do here, just to give you an idea of the different modes that we have, I'm going to convert this to a gray scale mode to do that you come here to image you go to mode and you click on gray scale and you can see the images now changed the colors have disappeared which means that a gray scale mode file cannot display all of the colors that we can get when we have it in an rgb mode and we'll look at what an indexed mode file means later. Having converted it to a grayscale, you can see that that is reflected here in the top left hand corner. In brackets, you can see that it says grayscale, telling us that it's a grayscale mode file. 
check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.